In this video, we'll go over the answer to question 18 of the 2021 New South Wales HSC chemistry exam. The question states, the table lists the information from a proton NMR spectrum. This is followed by a table containing three rows for each signal with the chemical shift in parts per million, the multiplicity of the signal and the number of hydrogens. The question then asks, which compound could have produced this spectrum? Followed by four options of organic chemicals. Firstly, let's move the question to the top in order to make some room. So the information we are given in the table tells us something about the molecule we need to find. The table describes three signals. The chemical shift reveals information about the hydrogen chemical environment with a larger chemical shift implying that electron density has been pulled away from the hydrogen due to deshielding, probably due to electronegative groups being nearby. The multiplicity tells us about how many hydrogens there are on neighboring atoms next to the hydrogen that produced the signal. That is, there will be n plus one peaks for n neighboring hydrogens due to peak splitting. This is called the n plus one rule and is summarized in this table. Finally, the last column tells us how many hydrogens are associated with the given signal. So using that information, one way to answer this question is to try to build up the molecule based on what we have in the table. It may not be on the list of options, but it will give us an idea of the type of answer it could be. The first signal has the lowest chemical shift, is a triplet, and there are three hydrogens in this environment. With three hydrogens, this suggests it is a carbon at the end of the molecule, as three bonds would be used for the hydrogens, and only one left in order to attach to the rest of the molecule. Based on our table from before, the triplet signal suggests that this group is connected to a carbon with only two hydrogens. If we draw this in, we now have a slightly different hydrogen environment, and so we need to see if there is a signal corresponding to only two hydrogens. There is, and this signal has a chemical shift of 1.8 parts per million and is a quartet. This works well with our previous hydrogen environment as the quartet implies we have three neighboring hydrogens. This is exactly what we had on the first carbon we drew. However, this implies that the next carbon in our chain won't have any hydrogens at all. We know these are not hydrogens, but something else. So we will leave these blank for now. The last signal has a chemical shift of 1.4 parts per million, is a singlet, and there are three hydrogens in this environment. We can see just attaching a carbon with three hydrogens attached to our chain actually agrees with this signal. It is a singlet, so there should be no neighboring hydrogens. The carbon we drew just before indeed has no hydrogens attached. Therefore, we have a partial molecule that agrees with all the signals now. We know it's some sort of butane, which means three of the four options we have are fine, but it does eliminate option B. So all we need to do is to fill in the blanks. The molecule requires two more atoms or groups. To ensure the lowest number in naming, we know that the order will be one to four left to right. And therefore the two blanks must be off the second carbon. We can eliminate option A now, because it has three groups attached to the butane main chain. Therefore, we are left with options C and D. Let's see what option C will look like. We have a chlorine and a methyl off the second carbon. This methyl group introduces additional hydrogen atoms. If we compare this with carbon one, we can see that this group will have the same environment. Both have three hydrogens and are connected to the second carbon. However, this would mean that the 1.4 part per million signal would need to have six hydrogens in our table above. The table only has three. Therefore, option C is also not the correct answer. We can see what option D looks like by replacing the methyl group with another chlorine. This will agree with the signals as we discussed previously and introduces no new hydrogens or hydrogen environments. Therefore, option D is the answer. Another and more thorough way to answer this question is via process of elimination, drawing out each molecule and matching it against the information in the table. This is a safer option as it ensures we do not miss an answer that is perhaps a better fit to the data. Let's start with option A and draw out the structural formula for 1, 2, 2, trichlorobutane. As we have drawn it here, the carbons are labeled 1 through 4, left to right. As in the table provided, this molecule has three hydrogen environments. Specifically, we have hydrogens of carbons 1, 3, and 4. We can see that carbon 1 has two hydrogens off of it. According to the table, the signal with two hydrogens should be a quartet. Using the table from the previous slide, a quartet implies that the neighboring carbon, carbon 2, should have three hydrogens. As we see here though, carbon 2 only has two chlorines attached, no hydrogens. Therefore, option A cannot be the answer. 
it doesn't follow the information provided. Next option B is 1,3-dichloro-2-methylpropane. Drawing this out, we have this structure for the molecule. As drawn here, we label the carbons left to right as 1 to 3. Just as in the table, we have three hydrogen environments. Firstly, the hydrogens on carbons 1 and 3 are in identical environments. This is because the molecule is symmetrical around carbon 2. The next environment is the hydrogen off carbon number 2. And lastly, the hydrogens on the methyl group off of carbon 2 is the third hydrogen environment. Concentrating on this methyl group, we can see that it has three hydrogens. According to the table, the signal should have a shift of 1.0 or 1.4 parts per million and be either a triplet or a singlet. We can see that the neighboring carbon has one hydrogen attached. With one hydrogen, this implies that the multiplicity should be a doublet. However, there is no doublet in the two possible signals. Therefore, option B cannot be the answer either. Option C is 2-chloro-2-methylbutane. Drawing this out and labeling the carbon atoms we get. As we've discussed before, this molecule has three hydrogen environments off of carbons 1, 3, and 4. Now, the hydrogens off the two carbon 1s share identical environments, and there are six of them. We see in the table that there is no signal that has six hydrogens associated with it. Therefore, option C is not the answer either. This leaves option D as our answer, which we have showed previously. The way that we figured out the answer in this question is not the only way to do it. And other reasons can be given in order to eliminate options A through C. For this video, the following references were used. Shell and Hogan have a couple sections which summarize nuclear magnetic resonance in general, and also it goes into specifics with hydrogen NMR, including the expected chemical shifts of different hydrogen environments and peak splitting via the N plus one rule. Blackman et al. cover the same topic areas, although in a lot more depth, showing calculations and more realistic plots of NMR spectra. There are also in-depth explanations and examples linking the spectra to the chemical structure of molecules. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.